our cedar trees are dying. It's, it, it is pretty obvious that something's going on here as far as uh, the, the climate goes, right? It's not gonna be the same as it was for the first 40 years we lived here, right? Things are changing. Biodynamic farming is a practical application of a very spiritual worldview. It treats the farm as a living organism, made up of fields, soil, forests, plants, animals, and people, all existing in harmony with the universe. We know we're in uh, a climate crisis, and we're just at the, the beginning of this uh, crisis, right? So that's part of why you're doing it. The sort of necessity of uh, humanity's survival, humanity's life stand, if you will. Biodynamic uh, food production on a local scale is a way to contribute to that. Humanity's last stand. It's an extreme way of looking at food production in a changing world. And for the swans, it called for an extreme lifestyle change, a new way of thinking that began with the biodynamics calendar, a celestial schedule that would shape their lives. This is the third, so it's root in the morning, and then a bit of a break, and then flower in the afternoon. The calendar tells you that it's a good time to do this, or it's a good time to do that. Where are the planets and the sun and everything in relationship to what you're doing? Like, for example, today is what's known as a root day. So what are we doing? We're working with weeding roots, or our young fella there is uh, weeding a carrot bed, right? And things kind of rotate. Well, at first it was a bit strange, but you know, I went down the rabbit hole <laughs> and I'm still deep down there. The rabbit hole that Louis is referring to is a belief system that views the farm as completely self-enclosed. Everything used on the farm is produced on the farm, and all of it synchronized with planetary cycles and movements. The highland cattle eat yard and garden waste, producing the manure used in biodynamic compost. Today, on the new moon, they're turning manure and stepping in rhythm, making barrel compost. It's just cow manure with a small amount of basalt and eggshell, stirred together, mixed together with a, a dance. It gives you, you know, 50 liters of, of barrel compost, which can be used like a handful in about 10 liters of water and stirred in the biodynamic way. And it would do all, all the acreage here. Gary is eager to share what he's learned, inviting those who are interested to be part of building larger compost heaps, which look familiar, but which in the biodynamic tradition are symbolically shaped like cows, with healing herbs inserted where the lungs, heart, and kidneys might be. It revolves around uh, various preparations. There are six medicinal herbs that are put in homeopathic quantities, like a bit and a handful in uh, 40 tons of, of potential compost. So that's homeopathy for the earth, and uh, that, that's what you're trying to do. You're, you're trying to heal the earth, and get the nutritional quality of the food, the higher nutritional quality is, as part of what you're producing. And it does, it is. Biodynamics, they really want, you know, you're connecting with the Mother Earth and Father Sky. So there's always that sort of thing that you're working with. And so many people don't, you know, the, the cosmos affects our lives every day. It affects plant growth, it affects how people feel, it affects the energy that's put into water, it affects the energy that's put into rocks and, and animals and insects and all kinds of stuff. It's not an easy concept to explain or to understand, but the Swan's Farm is highly productive. And although it's anecdotal, the family is satisfied that biodynamics is the reason. We know and we feel it because you can see it. And that is, I guess, science in a way, isn't it? Observation. Isn't that, isn't observation the sort of foundation of a scientific approach? They're just a family, just local farmers growing and selling produce, teaching their techniques and approach to those who will listen. 
But for the Swan family, it's so much more. It's hope. There's a poem in there that uh, the end of it says, what did you do once you knew? So what did you do once you knew that there was a climate disaster coming? You know, I, I've been an active person in the community, done some what I consider to be useful things. And I think this is gonna be the most useful. You know, there is the possibility of this community having a chance to feed most of its nutrition from the local way, right? And the basis of it is, a, in our view, is a sustainable agriculture. Right?